Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Kendall. Uh, today is going to be a uh, rapid fire going over my entire collection. Uh, to make this not go on forever, it is going to be rapid fire. Uh, some of these pens have been reviewed. Some will be reviewed in the future. Uh, some I wish I never purchased. Some I would purchase again. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is outline what the pen is. Um, maybe, you know, I meant mention how much it cost, where I got it, and, you know, just a few elements about it. But uh, before I, so, um, the way I'm gonna outline this is uh, from right to left in the order that I made a purchase. So I'm gonna start on the right here. This is a Pilot Varsity. Um, these, I used these for several years before I really got interested, before I, uh, decided to get into pens, uh, you know, just because I didn't know a lot about the hobby and I wanted to experience it. So they're great pens, they're disposable, and most people in the hobby know about these, but, uh, they come in a lot of colors, they've got great nibs, um, just a lot can be had with these. Uh, there are videos of people that will refill these, so it is possible. Um, and I, these are my number one recommendation for someone getting started just to see, do you like the hobby or do you like fountain pens in general? Uh, do you like the writing experience? Do you like, you know, there are some differences, how long ink takes to dry, what it looks like on different kinds of paper. Um, Yes, also leaving your, your pen uncapped for a while, you'll get a nib that dries out. Just getting used to what fountain pens are like. So this, uh, not this exact pen, but I had many of these before I started buying fountain pens. Uh, still buy them a little bit for the family, so I'm borrowing this from uh, one of my kids. So I am not counting this as one of the collection. So of the 27 pens that are right here, uh, 24 are actually in my collection. So I'm gonna set this aside. Uh, first pen, uh, first fountain pen that I bought uh, was this Faber-Castell Ambition. Uh, this is the rhombus pattern. And this pen was about $100. Uh, so it was a lot for me to, to purchase at the time but I wanted to start off right. I wanted to have a good quality pen. I went to a brick and mortar store to try it out. Uh, I got to try a lot of pens that day and, and this is the one that really uh, sung to me. Uh, those that have tried the nib on the Loom or others, uh, it's, it's the same nib. So um, I, I do love this pen. It's, uh, I got the fine nib uh, it's a cartridge converter, uh, snap cap, uh, very nice pen, and a great one to start off with. Um, after I got that pen, I was afraid to take it anywhere. So I went on Amazon and I found a lot of positive reviews for this. Uh, it's a Dryden Designs. I hadn't heard much about it, but I thought it's it was like $20. And uh, we had a lot of Amazon credit. So, um, and that will actually apply to a lot of these pens. I did get a bunch of these on Amazon. Uh, so I got this. Uh, things I, I really like, it is a snap cap. It, uh, it actually writes really well. Also cartridge converter. Uh, really fine nib, but it's nice. I really like it. And I carried this around my pocket. I wasn't too afraid of it being damaged or problems. And a lot of people would see this color and say, that's a beautiful pen, tell me more about it. Um, so I really like it for that. Um, one of the downsides is the nib and feed don't come out. So uh, I can't recommend this pen because of that. Um, later, I, I purchased this wooden uh, rosewood color same pen, same idea, uh, and that one doesn't write well. And since you can't take it apart, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. So uh, that's a Dryden Designs. 
Again, can't say I recommend it. Um, next, I got this from Goulet. Uh, this is uh, Jinhao uh, X750. Uh, this is a medium nib. Really, really fun pen. Um, I like it. Again, snap cap, which is nice. And, you know, a lot of the uh, Jinhao's kind of have a triangular grip, which I don't love. This is nice and round and uh, a lot a lot to love here. Very cheap pen. Uh, this was $9.90 at the time I purchased. Uh, the next pen that I got actually is not this. This is a placeholder um, because I got a Platinum Plazier and I ended up giving that pen to my wife and she doesn't, uh, she has it with her I believe right now. So um, I can't show off the pen, but I didn't love it. Uh, for a few reasons. Mostly, it just felt way too light. It's a very thin aluminum body. Um, just just the way it felt writing with it, it just was too light. But it's got a beautiful nib, and so it is also not part of my collection. Um, but Platinum Plazier, if you like light pens, uh, very nice. It was uh, $17 that I got it from Goulet. Uh, next pen, I got this one on Amazon, uh, is a Hongdian uh, Forest Rainbow. And uh, the Black Forest, it's kind of the same model. And this as well is a snap cap. So very nice. Uh, I like the looks of this pen. And the only downside to this, besides the nib is very fine, is that it's got a slippery section. So the grip isn't the best. So that's the one hold, the one uh, issue I've got with this pen. Uh, next, this is another placeholder. Um, that's a pen. <laughs> this this is a placeholder for a pen that I bought off of Amazon. It because it looked cool. Uh, I think it was called a Yanbird FX something. It didn't even tell you what the nib size. It was that terrible of a pen. Um, it looked cool but the capping mechanism didn't work well. It dried out. Uh, the nib was cheap and terrible. Uh, and yeah, uh, I actually gave it to my daughter and she didn't like it either. It didn't work and it went to the trash. So uh, again, not part of my collection, but placeholders. Um, so this was another Amazon pen. Uh, again, had a lot of credits on Amazon, so I was using that to my advantage. Um, this pen just looked beautiful, um, and it is nice. It's a very heavy pen. It's called the... Uh, it's a Wordsworth and Black uh, Majesty, uh, or Majesty, and it's actually not a bad pen. Um, you can tell... The color is quite a bit lighter on this end, this finial here, and uh, the end of this cap. So the color consistency is not the greatest. Uh, it's a heavy pin, screw cap, and the nib is okay. It's not my favorite. Um, so ultimately, it doesn't rank really high in my collection, but that's, uh, that is that. Um, yeah, that one was about 20 to 25. Um, this one is another Dryden Designs. This is the same issue as the green pen that I just talked about. Uh, snap cap. It's nice uh, looking as far as the wood, but I have had terrible luck with it drying out, and so I can't recommend uh, Dryden Designs. Um, so up next... Uh, this one was from Amazon as well. This is a um, Monagio, M-O-N-A-G-G-I-O, -G -G uh, the luxury black. This is a um, snap cap, uh, and it is a hooded nib. So this was my first experience with a hooded nib, and it's a very, very fine pen. Uh, it works okay, but... I just, I don't love um, the experience. I found out later I don't really like hooded nibs, but um, it's just really fine writer. Um, and I was hoping at the time that I bought it, um, after I got this pen, 
and how big and beautiful that is, I was hoping it would be bigger. And I just didn't, you know, this was before I watched reviews uh, about pens. And so I was just going off of, you know, reviews on Amazon. First of all, was it on Amazon? Did it have a lot of reviews? And did it look cool? That's what I was going off of. So um, I should say Amazon does have a fountain pen called the Basics. And it actually, uh, from what I've heard, is a decent pen. But it has the Amazon logo. And I just couldn't get behind that. So uh, next pen, this is a Wingsong 699. This, has, uh, this pen has a full review. Um, overall, I just... I think it's great value, uh, about $30. Uh, it is basically a knockoff of the Pilot Custom 823, uh, which is, uh, at the time of this video, about $330. So anyway, there's very big differences, um, but for $30, it's, it's a really good value, and I would recommend this pen. Uh, all right, next up. This will be familiar to a lot of people. This is a Jin Hao 159. Uh, I also ended up getting an X159 on the end here. That's my latest pen that I've purchased. Uh, so um, ultimately I would recommend the X159. Uh, it's got a better clip. In fact, I'll just show these right now. Um, I like the simpler clip. Um, it's also a lot lighter. The weight itself didn't really bother me with with this pen, uh, but comparing the two, I do I do like the weight better of the the X159. Both very affordable pens. Um, yeah, twelve fifty for this one, uh, and uh, let's see the X159. Yeah, actually I got. Uh, X159 was about $10, so a very affordable pen. And I would recommend the X159 over, over the 159. Um, similar, it's got the design uh, shape of a Mont Blanc 149. So, uh, and you also get a much larger nib with the X159. Uh, the next pen, uh, this, this pen is the... Twisby Diamond 580. This is an amazing pen. There's some great reviews on this uh, on YouTube, and I just have to say it's uh, it's well worth what people are saying. So this was about $65 from Goulet, and I would highly recommend this pen. Uh, piston filled, uh, which is is good because you can see all this ink in here. The demonstrator uh, clear body, so. Highly recommend. All right, after the Twisby, my next purchase, this is another Wingsung. Uh, this is a 698 and um, it's a fine nib. I actually thought I might like this pen uh, because of the Twisby, but it has such a, such a fine nib. And you'll notice that with a lot of Chinese pens a uh, very fine nib. The, the clear feed is kind of cool, but I just don't love the nib. So overall quality is okay, um, but just know the, the nib is really important on a pen. And if you don't like really fine nibs and, uh, you know, sometimes lack of quality control. So uh, again, not sure I would buy this again um, or recommend it. I'd be a little reluctant to recommend. Uh, this is a Moon Man slash Majon uh, Q1. And this is a really fun pen. Uh, just how short, chonky it is, I would recommend this pen. Uh, it's about $20. I got this one on Amazon. Um, it actually posts okay. And you wouldn't think this would be comfortable, but it actually is. It's not a bad pen. Um, it, there is some staining. There's an O-ring uh, in here that I put some imperial purple and it stained it. Um, 
I would recommend maybe getting a black o-ring or something that won't absorb that color um, but again it's just a, a fun it's very dramatic how different this this pen is all right the next one here is another wing sung uh, 618 and this too is a piston filler uh, the difference here and I believe this is a Parker kind of look-alike situation. Um, this, if you can see that, is a hooded nib. Um, I really don't like hooded nibs, and it took this pen to show me that. Uh, and I since have revisited the, the other hooded nib I have, and I just don't like it. So uh, I wouldn't get this again just because of that. Um, the nib is not the best, maybe, but it is decent. Uh, I think it's just just a hooded nib is the issue there. Um, all right. This pen got its own review and video. Uh, it's a Noodler's Triple Tail. Uh, I purchased this for about $60 from Goulet, and um, it's a decent enough pen. What's really cool about it is the triple tines that it has. Uh, or music nib, whatever you want to call that. So it's a triple tail because of the triple tines. Um, ultimately, pretty nice quality. Um, there is a whole video about how bad this stinks and maybe ways to get the stink to be less. And so that's what this pen is here. Uh, so far, I've been able to get rid of the smell enough that I can use it. And um, we'll see, you know, if that changes but for now it's doing okay um, this is a sailor 1911 compass uh, I purchased this from Goulet for about thirty dollars and it is a it says medium fine or fine medium on this nib um, it feels like super sharp it feels like a needle point to me um, so it, it uh, trying to love this pen uh, I do like to see more ink on the page and uh, I don't know there's there's a lot of feedback I think there is something to sailor pens or nibs about feedback and it's probably a lot more magical with a gold nib uh, this being a $30 pen it was more in my price range for sailor to try it out um, but yeah, it's, uh, you have to really like fine writers for that. Uh, this is a Asveen V169. Uh, I love the look of this pen. It's a little heavier, but it's I quite like it. Uh, screw cap. It's got a nice nib. Uh, glassy smooth. It might even be too smooth that I get some uh, skipping. And uh, baby's bottom, which... You can look that up and, and learn more about. Uh, this is a vac filler, so there's that's fun as well. And ultimately, I do like it. Uh, this pen, let's see, cost-wise, uh, this was about $38. All right, this is a Moon Man uh, slash Majon A1, and I would highly recommend this pen. It's uh, it's a knockoff of the Pilot Vanishing Point, but it's and it's got a fine nib, uh, but you can get replacement nibs through Pilot or others. Um, this was about forty dollars, and it's just a great pen. I would recommend it. A lot of good videos out there on this. Uh, the Vanishing Points typically have a clip up here where it can get in the way of your grip. This is nice because uh, this is a clipless version, so it's got this roll stop. Uh, and it also shows you kind of where the nib lines up, which is handy too. Um, so that is that pen. This video is getting long. Sorry about that. These next three pens I can do at the same time. These are all Jin Hao 80s. And I decided to get three because they were only about $4.00. And uh, to make the experience better, I bought some, some nibs from Goulet. Uh, they take the Lamy uh, nibs. So I got this, uh, this maroon with gold, this uh, 
white or ivory with gold, and then this nice navy blue with gold. And I went with a medium, a broad, and a 1.1 stub so that I could try all three of those Lamy nibs. Uh, the nibs were about $16 and very difficult to swap those nibs. Um, I do recommend uh, Inquiring Minds. Uh, Doug has a great video on how to take the nibs out. Uh, I ended up using fingernail clippers to get those nibs out. Uh, ruined the original nibs, but I didn't care. Uh, I threw those and I put some really nice nibs on these. So here's the, here's the stub, you can see. Um, very nice. They do have a look similar to uh, Lamy 2000 but they don't look anything like it when you uncap it. It doesn't have the hooded nib. It doesn't have a piston fill. Um, they're just beautiful pens, and I do recommend these, uh, although you may want to invest in a better nib. Uh, those pens, after that, um, I got this. This has its own video. In fact, this review to this pen was my first video ever. Uh, it's got a retractable nib, which is fun does have a kind of a cool factor to it um, when you post this and then twist it just a little bit more the nib comes out that's which is really cool uh, I do recommend uh, this pen if you like a fine nib this is uh, extra fine uh, the nib is really nice and I'm loving it uh, I don't like this pen for quick notes but if you're gonna write for a little bit, this is an excellent, excellent pen. And I just like the look. Uh, it is a knockoff of a Mont Blanc Bohem, um, and those pens go for several hundred dollars. Uh, this was about 40, and I do love this pen. It's nice. Uh, this is a um, Moon Man, is this an M800, uh, and I just love the acrylics in this. I think the quality is nice. The nib is really nice. Uh, this pen, uh, this was about uh, $30. And man, I just, I, I really recommend this pen. It's got a great feel to it. It's got kind of this milk bottle shaped uh, section, which is similar to a Leonardo. Uh, Memento, I believe. So, cartridge converter, great pen. Would definitely buy that one again. Uh, this is a Gin House Centennial 100, and it is a beautiful pen. They come in a lot of different uh, colorways. Um, I just, I like the nib quite a bit. Uh, I don't like it as much as this Moon Man, but it's, it's a decent pen, uh, decent price. Uh, this was about $15 at the time I bought it. Uh, and, sorry for a long video, but this is the last pen that I'll talk about, and it's uh, an upgraded version of this. So I already went over that. Um, these come in some nice colorways. This is the burgundy gold. I think there's, uh, uh, there's black with both gold or silver trim. There's a lot of fun uh, colors to this, so... Anyway, thanks for sticking around for this long video, and I will be back soon with some more fun content. Uh, if you enjoyed this, if you appreciate the videos I'm making, please subscribe so you don't miss out, and I appreciate the uh, thumbs up would be helpful too. Thanks.